and today we're back on the Heathland and we're going to get to know this area a little bit more. Did you know that the Heathland habitat is actually made up of two main areas? And the landscape behind me is a perfect example. Can you see those wet areas glistening in the sun? That's our wet heath. And then we've got the sandy areas and that's our dry heath. In today's lesson we're going to delve a little bit deeper and we're going to get to know these areas a little bit more. We've come to the dry heathland part of our habitat and the soils are really sandy here which means that water drains quickly through them. It makes it quite drought-like and the plants that can tolerate this are things like the heathers and the gorses. And these make a great habitat in themselves for some of our native reptiles and the invertebrates which get shelter and protection and food from it. This is heather and it's an example of one of our hardy heathland plants. It flowers in summer purple and pinks and it's one of three varieties so we have bell heather, common heather which is what this is and crossleaf heath and that's found on the wet heathlands. It's a great feeding ground for invertebrates and we can find one of our rarest butterflies living on this, the silver studded blue. This amazing little butterfly has figured out a pretty clever survival strategy. It's developed a relationship with a little black ant that lives on the heathland. The caterpillar gives a sticky sweet substance to the ant that they absolutely love. The ant in return provides protection for the little caterpillar but also for the emerging butterfly. Pretty clever, eh? Okay, so can anyone tell me what this plant is next to me? It's bright yellow, really spiky, and sometimes it even smells like coconut. The gorse bush. You've probably seen it on your heathlands. It's bright yellow and it's really obvious. And this plant provides an incredible home for a really special bird, the Dartford warbler. The Dartford warbler loves gorse. Its nickname is the punk of the bird world. Just look at that haircut. It stays here all year round, which is a pretty risky strategy as it doesn't cope with cold weather too well. You can often hear its scratchy sound and see it perched on the tips of the gorse bush where it can pick out spiders and caterpillars from their hiding places. So all six of our native reptiles live on this heathland site. We're going to take a look at a couple of those, the sand lizard and the adder. Our reptiles have all been hidden underground over the winter because it's too cold for them. They need to conserve their energy. But around this time of year, they start to emerge and like to sit out on the sandy slopes, basking and warming up. Now the adder, which is this one, has a very distinct zigzag pattern on its back and a red eye. The pattern's really clever because it provides fantastic camouflage when it's tucked under the heather. These are our only venomous snakes and they use their venom to immobilise their prey ready to eat. Another reptile that loves the dry heath because of the bare patches of sand is the aptly named sand lizard. Look at its amazing green colour, wow, and its little eye spots all around its back. The female lays her eggs in the sand and she's really picky, so does lots of practice burrows to find the perfect spot for her eggs to incubate. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that lesson and we've learned a little bit more about this heathland habitat. Let's head back to the classroom and we're gonna make our very own heathland in a shoebox. Come on, let's go. Join us next time for our lesson all about the wet heath.